Are sanctions working or not? They are working. Right now, they're helping Ukraine to defend itself and to hopefully to win the war. Longer term, they will restrict the growth of the Russian economy, which will in turn restrict Putin's ability to wage more wars, making us all safer. Whether we like it or not, while he remains in power, we are back at Cold War-style containment. The sanctions should stay in place. We need to make sure they're enforced, because as Simon says, historically they're evaded. And ideally, we need to make them stronger. Richard's the economist here, so I won't go into detail on the sanctions themselves or their economic effects. But in brief, uh, the West response to the invasion in February was remarkably, unexpectedly strong and swift and unified. There was near universal condemnation in the UN. Weapons started to be shipped immediately. And the first package of sanctions was agreed. And I think we're now on to our sixth, seventh package. I've lost count. They, they were on a completely different scale from the mere slap on the wrist um, in terms of sanctions that the West gave Russia in 2014 after it initially invaded the Donbass and Crimea. They cover hundreds of state-connected individuals and entities who've had their assets abroad frozen, doing business with them is banned, and they've been slapped with travel bans. That list is still expanding. On the financial side, all but essential financial transactions with a very small number of Russian banks are banned. Russian banks are out of the SWIFT international payment system. Credit cards issued by Russian banks don't work abroad. In addition, the portion of Russia's foreign exchange reserve held in central banks abroad has been frozen, and that makes up about half of the total Russian reserve. On trade, export to Russia of a wide range of goods, um, sensitive ones and high technology products in particular, is banned. It includes micro microchips, vitally. On the import side, Europe is dramatically cutting its purchases of gas and oil. On the gas, there was originally a rather vague plan, um, never laid out in detail, to cut down on purchases. But Russia jumped the gun by itself, first turning off the taps, using the need for maintenance of the, of the Nord Stream pipeline as an excuse. And then it actually sabotaged, uh, extraordinarily, the two Nord Stream pipelines itself. So Europe, Europe was prevented from buying more Russian gas willy-nilly. On oil, the sanctions have not yet come into force. They'll do that next month. From December the 5th, uh, imports of Russian, seaborne imports of Russian crude will come to an end, and that'll be extended in February to all oil products. The G7 is putting together a price cap on Russian oil. The details of that have not yet been announced, but that will come into a force also next month. Last of all, over a 1,000 Western firms, uh, under pressure from customers in part, have voluntarily withdrawn from Russia, either closing or selling up completely, or mothballing operations. Um, more firms have halted investment plans. So how have all this, this massive, pa massive pa package of sanctions have affected the Russian economy so far? When they were first announced, there was, and when the war broke out, there was panic. Shelves emptied, ATMs more or less stopped working, the ruble crashed. Since then, things have stabilised, but only superficially. Shelves are full again, but with substitute more expensive goods. Inflation's running at nearly 13%. Rubles recovered, but thanks to exchange controls and the fact that imports have collapsed. On the all-important question of energy prices, they're coming down again. The gas price is coming down again after its spike in the summer, thanks to some rather nimble um, finding of alternative sources of supply by Europe. And oil is down to 87 a barrel, so below the magic $100 a barrel, which is in normal times the, the level at which Russia can balance its budget. That's partly due to another fears of another COVID break, outbreak in China, but also due to this imminent G7 price cap. The Russian economy as a whole is forecast to shrink by over 3% this year, over 2% next. Those are disappointingly small figures, but they mask much bigger drops in sectors dependent on imports. 
So high-tech manufacturing, telecoms, aviation, high-speed rail, and vitally defense. 